You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. Welcome to the Palace of Mega Pixels. This is Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo! Hello, everyone, and welcome to Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo. I'm your host, Stephen White, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Lacia Finley. Well, happy Monday. And after the holidays, hopefully you all survived. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you all enjoyed our little mini that we tossed your way. Maybe it was uh, up your alley, or maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, you know, at least it wasn't a lot of your time this time. <laughs> we only asked for a small part mm -hmm. of your time. And thank you to David for all his uh, wonderful comments of on course, Twitter. Yes. I know we try to thank him on Twitter, but I also like to thank him here. Mm -hmm. Because he's stepping up to his uh, Ask Deva role that yes, we kind of thrust into upon it. him. Yeah. So, all, you know, siblings, get your questions in. Maybe you we know? need to make that in the Discord. Perhaps. Like its yeah. own own section. You could, you could uh, ask directly. Yeah, that would that would actually be, but then it would be fun for us to to talk about it here. But we could do that, and then maybe we can entice uh -huh. people from the di see. We we take the Look at Discord what we're trying content. to cross promote here. Look at this, all the yeah. things. Get on so, them. <laughs> so what? Yeah, what we're gonna do here is uh, re remind all of our siblings at Super Mega Crash hashtag Ask Dava, and that's D A E V A, right? Yes. Ah, -E -E, see, yeah. So yeah. we'll, I had we'll to get look it. again because it shook my confidence. I'm like, that's what I've been saying this whole time, right? <laughs> yeah. So and just then get added on the it. Palladia because he used to be, you know, 001. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So back when I first. <laughs> that's right. I had to meet him through you, technically. Yep. So. Ah, the internet. Get on it, people. That's all I'm saying. So I want to talk about a few things, as I always do. One, oh man. Oh man, somebody, I, I want to think that this is uh, when when the tide starts to turn on, on views and, and how much people are paying attention. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at Super Mega Crash Adventures Episode 3 and just yes. looking through some analytics and I noticed we got a thumbs down. <laughs> oh yeah, since it's not visible now. Well... Yeah. So okay, well, that still seems okay. Mm -hmm. It's gonna happen. I got but a lot of views. It felt like I looked at it one day and it was at like forty, and I was like, "All right, well, we didn't do a whole lot to promote it." And then, like, what a week ago, just for grins, I checked again. I was like, "What happened?" Yes, yeah, <laughs> seems like when I'm not paying attention. I don't understand you too. I don't. So it, at some point, <laughs> you know, we had like the surge of views, mm -hmm. uh, not like a million, which. Let's be honest. Okay, would be I'm amazing, still very but... impressed when we get over a few hundred. Yeah, right? no kidding. Uh, but some somebody just decided, you know, the, out of the people who were watching, it would be also amazing if everyone hit a like. But I understand it's not for everybody. I hear that stuff right. all the time, where it's like, "Hey, leave a like below," and I'm just like, "Yeah," and, you know. But you'll you'll end up in their algorithm, so you have to be sure, right? Because as soon as you go back to your homepage, now all of a sudden, I watched one video by a person, and now they're everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels. And it could be a good thing. I know it's simple. I know it's a simple thing. Like hit mm -hmm. the button, hit the button. I just I don't know what it is about pressing that button i guess because it creates I think it depends a, on what they're watching it on yeah or I it feel creates like mobile is a little bit well maybe that one's fine it's the comments that's harder to get to i think on mobile or who knows some people just don't you know, don't care well for me it creates a playlist of all my liked videos and i'm like okay so say i enjoy someone's content like i watch good mythical morning you know during mm -hmm. the weekdays philip defranco on the weekdays you know these are my go-to shows every day when they mm -hmm. post, but I don't like all their videos. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy the content. Sure. I keep coming back. So I'm enjoying the content, but I don't physically hit the like button on every video because I just, I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, 
I, I'm it not is programmed easy to forget to about when you're just sitting there watching a bunch of them in a row or something. Like you queued up maybe a few, mm. and it's like, well. And I hate, I hate like I'm, I'm taking something away from them if that does technically help. Uh, I mean, it's not done me any favors, but I'm just saying, I, you know, I don't think about it. I'm not, yeah. I'm usually watching on my TV, so it's not there. Oh, yeah, that one you have to go out of your way to find the like button on the TV yeah. for sure. So, I don't know. But, yeah, we got a thumbs down for that one. Why? Okay, well. Who knows? Who but knows? I, I was just like, good. Great. There you go. Thank At you. At least we know someone was interacting. Yeah, so they're just you. like, this is stupid. I don't understand yeah. all these. Eight- or they just didn't like it, and that's fair, too. I mean, I don't know. I mean, part of me wants to know why, but at the same time, I really don't care. I think it's more like the, the person I see doing this uh, looked at it and was just like, uh, 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 like something in their brain. They were just so bothered by it even though it made no sense whatsoever they were just like what? this is just so stupid i don't understand why these characters be in this world and for all you know it was some parent who caught their kid watching it and then heard us say like a bad word and went oh, no and thought no. about it <laughs> perhaps this is a for kids you'll get a I letter don't. soon from all the angry moms i don't know i don't know i just i found it uh, amusing and yeah. to say the least uh, but hey, uh, shifting away from that for a moment, what about, and I'm sure you're going to talk about something later on, uh, in the news that will probably kind of be related parallel to this, but this is not video game related, but still in a similar vein. Uh, okay. what about those scalpers taking oh on God. tickets for Spider-Man No Way Home? You know what though? You know what though? If any of you bought it, good. You deserve it. Because, like, for a freaking theater ticket, I'm sorry, whatever it is with these NFTs that's crawled up, you know, people, like, I think I've given it more credit than it was due by me actively trying to figure out what it is about them. Mm -hmm. Because, like, if it's this popular, I'm clearly not understanding something. No, I think I get it. I do. I think I've just, I get it now. But $1,700 was the cheapest one I saw for a freaking theater ticket. It's ridiculous. You said you saw 10K? 10K. Mm-hmm. Think about Seriously, this. Seriously, people? Think about this. This is a movie. A okay? Movie. Like, I'm I'm super excited to go see Spider-Man No Way Home, okay? Super stoked. Like, this is my jam. This is the thing I've been waiting for for mm-hmm. several years now. There is no situation in this world that would... Make me pay $10,000 more or less, anything more than a regular theater ticket. Yeah. Okay? I'm not paying any more than what I would have to pay for a regular theater ticket to see this movie because even if I can't see it opening day, there's a chance I could see it the next day or the next day after. And if I I knew like all that's going to do is hurt the theater. Because what yeah. if you have all of these tickets that are sold that nobody's buying because they're not going to pay 2 k for a freaking theater ticket, and now all those seats are empty yeah. at a time where theaters are closing? And and think about this, people. If you don't understand this, I'm going to try to break it down to you very slowly. And I'm not trying to say our siblings are idiots, but... Yeah, just they're... like, yeah. If you're, not, if you're a sibling, I, I assume that you are, you know... One of us. You're with it. You're sharp. You're one of the cool kids. <laughs> if you're a newbie, you know, and you're trying to figure out if you want to be a we sibling. We don't know you yet. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, you're trying to figure out where you belong, if this insults you, then you probably need to get going. <laughs> you probably but need to go. uh, theaters, the, the reason popcorn and soda and all this stuff is so expensive in the theater is because the theater has to make money mm-hmm. through other means. That comes from popcorn and candy and snacks and all this. That's how they earn their, yeah. you know, money, their their revenue. Video of, games sitting out in the lobbies and stuff like that. That's their revenue stream. Well, in a lot of cases, theaters aren't making money for ticket sales. That goes to really not. the distributors and right. the publishers and, you know, the actors and blah, blah, whatever contracts they signed. So they're not, a lot of theaters don't even make a red cent. Yeah. Off of that ticket sale. So they need you to have butts in seats and buy things. And to understand, you know, when you, during the pandemic, when, when theater owners were struggling and they were just yeah. like, well, we can't do this straight to streaming and why that turned into a big deal. It's because these theaters mm-hmm. 
without that film or without films coming to theaters, they're going to fold. Yeah, that business is done. To, yeah. What else are they going to sell? Yeah, exactly. Now, me personally, I think they could survive showing older films and kind of give an experience. Oh, to, like a couple of bucks for this ticket instead. And yeah. If there was an opportunity to see movies that I never would have had an opportunity to see in theaters, like proper, not just a mm-hmm. not just a big screen. I can do a big screen at home. I'm talking like the sound the experience. Yeah. The experience. I would do it. Like when I got to the the only one I've actually got to do that with, and I'm sure there's another that I'm I'm missing, but seeing the original Godzilla from Japan from nineteen fifty four in a theater. Ooh, yeah. And 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 we're talking the original Japanese uh, with subtitles. Audio. Yeah, w- yeah, no no English dub, no, I'm no with you edits. There. I, I like to hear the the actor. Yeah, <laughs> how they emoted. I want to hear that. Yeah. When that when I had that opportunity, I was like, I'm taking this because mm-hmm. I'll never have this opportunity again. There was only one theater uh, out in Nashville that was showing it, and it's. I'm sure every town has that art house theater. Like, mm-hmm. they're the place that you go to to find these rarities that sure. no other theater is going to show. They were showing it. And I was really hoping that there was there would be another one because they're doing a 60th anniversary for the same thing. Oh, and okay. I think there's a theater down in Austin that was showing, like, a bunch of old or older okay. Godzilla like films. And I was like, ah. Oh. That's just, that's killing me. And I wish there was a theater like that nearby. I think it's the Alamo Draft House. That sounds right. Anyway, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I, I, that would be we cool. We used to have one like that when I was growing up, though. So, I mean, but they would do it on Saturday mornings for a dollar. Yeah, the matinees and whatnot. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But, it, I mean, but it was movies that would have already, like, you could have gone to rent, mm. you know. But, like, they would sell them for a dollar. And but so you... that's what us kids would, you know, go do in our team. Go watch those for a dollar. You're away from our mom and dad. And yeah. we got to see an older movie. You know? <laughs> and it's just, you know, you're getting and out of the house. a dollar. You're hanging out. Yeah. And I think, I think stuff like that would still be cool. I mean, just because mm-hmm. it's an older movie doesn't mean that's not an experience of some sort. Sure. That you could do. I mean, hell, I like to listen to these uh, these stories of people who grew up, I guess, when they used to do the double features for a nickel. Mm-hmm. And you just go in and you just have that and you have that experience. You watch them over and over and over. I never had that, really, technically. I mean, I guess v- VHS and the video store was kind of like that for us. Sure. But, I don't know. It's just... Hmm. Yeah. But, it's yeah, shame, that's... Though. Theaters. We got way off topic. Yeah, theaters. Yeah, how it goes. <laughs> Uh, Spider-Man, do not pay more than ticket price. It's not worth it. The movie will be there. At some... I just can't believe that they tried to shoot for such an extravagant price. Like, well, I would expect $50, $100, which is still extremely scummy, by the way. But, like, who in their right freaking mind decided to start in the thousands? Yeah. Do I have you... to know if people bought this because it's just like my brain can't even comprehend how one would even value it that high, even with an NFT. Sorry, you've got to prove to me these things are actually worth anything first. And in all honesty, just think about that for a moment. Say you're the sap that bought this. You sit down in the theater, mm-hmm. uh, seat A14, okay? That's your seat that you paid ten grand for. Right beside you is a guy who paid 25 for his. And I'm being very generous because I right. don't know what the ticket sale prices are anywhere else, but I know they go up. But say this I guy over here... I think 20 is about a fair price, at least, for one person. Yeah, this guy over here paid 20 bucks, And you guys are sitting side by side. What makes your seat better than his? Nothing. Are you going to see a different movie? Hell no, you're going to see the exact same movie. You're sitting side by side. You got scammed. The feet scammed. are still going to stick to the floor. Uh, you'll probably still find someone else's popcorn. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe you got one of the nice theaters that has the reclining seats. Okay. But he Ooh. still paid 20 bucks for it. <laughs> yeah. Sitting right beside you. <laughs> yup. So just don't do it. I just don't. can't believe it. I can't believe it. I hope they all get stuck with it. I hope so too. But, but. I just also feel bad for the theater. Anyway, I could go round and round. Because the one by my house was closed when I went to visit over the holidays. Aww. Or, well, I guess back home, not by my house currently. But, yeah, we were at a hotel that would have been close to that area, drove by, had a big for lease sale sign on it. That was there since I could remember. But so it, it was is sad. 
it was probably a locally owned theater. I I mean I think they're franchised out. It was mm-hmm. um was it AMC? Well, well, yeah, they did take a lot of hit during yeah. the uh, pandemic. I'm trying to remember what was the big thing I saw in the beginning with the advertisements for the because I want to say those were the only ones around the St. Louis area when I was growing up at the mm. time. But uh, uh, yeah, just still sad. I mean, mm. there was one still in the town over that I think was still operating very little bit, but it only had 10 screens, the one that shut down. Mm. So it wasn't even like a 20 screen one where I would have expected a little bit more. But I guess well, that's, when you're that's in a smaller sad. town, I guess, you know, it's harder to get things back up and running if you had that long of a stint without anything coming in i would Mm -hmm. guess i mean it's not like a tiny tiny town it's not a thriving metropolis 40 50k you know people you know that sounds about the town uh straight like directly over from us they're kind of that they're a big bustling wannabe bigger town like Ah. they're trying to be as big as their sister city right next next door because they're bustling they've got all the traffic they got everything just crammed into this big mall area and they're like well we could do that too and then there's construction <laughs> like, going up like the dollar tree over. next to the walmart <laughs> yeah <laughs> we could be it too Woo! but anyway but, i don't know we're way off we're way it rambling. doesn't matter <laughs> we know how they know how this works but uh, uh I, I felt like I had something else to say and add to that, but it doesn't We were matter. talking about I've, theaters and scalping and Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, I I'm, think was the initial I, conversation. I think, I'm, <laughs> I think I'm done with that because I've forgotten where I'm at. Okay. Uh, I did want to bring up one other thing and, and just kind of talk through it for a minute because uh, this isn't like for, I guess it's, it's something I want to, I'm trying to process for whatever reason, because my brain has decided that this sounds like a great idea and I feel like it's given me some sort of fulfillment that I didn't realize I was looking for, but, okay. uh, it's doing something for me in all the right ways and I'm, I'm excited about it and I'm hoping that nothing causes me to step away from it because it's, it's bringing me joy. I have, uh, adopted over the last week, the... I'm learning two different languages. Good for you. I'm learning Japanese. Two different. You're gonna you're gonna bundle anything with Japanese right now. But but this let me explain. I say two different languages, but I'll explain. Okay, I'll let you finish. Japanese, because I've always wanted to learn Japanese. Mm -hmm. Um. Obviously, I could just go for basics, and then of course everybody, anybody that I've spoken to about it. When they hear that, they're like, oh, see what you got the movies? Yes, asshole. That's one reason. <laughs> but. That wasn't the first thing that popped into my head. But. But. Um, no, it's just I've always wanted to learn another language. And I know mm-hmm. the, the basic one around here would prob- probably be Spanish. But I oh, yeah, to- I failed hardcore by not learning Spanish because that's that's so prevalent around here, too. Mm-hmm. And it probably yeah. would uh, serve me better than Japanese, but Japanese is something that I uh, am fascinated with. Like, oh. I enjoy the culture. Mm-hmm. I have tons of movies, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, in <laughs> Japanese. So and it was about the movies. So it's it's it feels like something I'm already familiar with in a way. And what's interesting about it is I'm doing small lessons every day. And I have have been I've, I haven't done one today, but I, I will. I just haven't had the time. I wanted to wake up, you, you know. I been, to be yeah, focused. we've not been awake a lot. <laughs> and I won't say that I've learned a lot thus far, but what I have learned has stuck with me. Like even the day that I learn it, I feel like I'm struggling with it, you know. Or maybe I wouldn't What's say a struggling. Tough language with it? if it's not your first one. It's a lot of different sounds that we just don't have in our language. Well, what's interesting about it, like where I'm at in learning, um, right now I'm kind of learning some of their characters. And mm-hmm. it's not necessarily writing uh, in Japanese, but understanding it from what they call Romaji. I, I think I've said that right, which is like Roman language, like wh- how we would write it, you know. So okay. th- there's a differential between their characters and what we I'm use. sure. Yeah. 
But what's interesting about it is uh, I broke, or they started breaking down in the lesson yesterday, and it was trying to get you familiar with what we would call the vowels. And I don't know if that's what they would technically classify them as, but vowels for us. So A E I O U. So they break it down, and each letter has a character. Mm hmm. So after I learned that, I was like, okay, and you you learn the sounds, kind of get familiar with it, and then they'll just kind of quiz you based on those characters. And it, I was surprised that it, w it was kind of sticking in my brain, you know? Like I would look at it, and it's like I memorized it. It was just like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's that, that's that. And I won't say I did perfect every time because I would kind of hit, you know, like, it was like, whoa, 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 or I'd forget mm -hmm. something or I'd get it mixed up with something. But it's sticking here. Which I appreciated. Good. Yeah. Then they introduced me to a new set of characters. K A, K I, K E, K U, K O. And I was like, Oh. So now if yep. you see the word like uh Koku, that's two I was like, Holy shit, it's all coming to get like I'm starting to Things understand. Are making sense. Yeah. yeah. So I started looking at different Japanese words in Romaji, and I was like, okay, so perhaps because you see certain uh, collections of letters like Shin, I, w I haven't gotten there. And I don't want to try to jump ahead or anything like that, sure. you know what I mean? Yeah, but I've seen Shin, S-H-I-N, mm -hmm. and a lot of Japanese names, titles, things like that. So it started to occur to me. I was like, so is that one character? Is that a thing? Mm -hmm. And then would, thinking of Godzilla, because that's obviously where my head goes. Sure. Go, G, Ra. It's three characters in Japanese. And I know those characters. That's the beauty of that. <laughs> like, I know those characters. I know those. If I, if I saw it, if, they, if it was presented to me, I was like, I know what that says. Mm -hmm. So, but now I have context. Is and I don't know that for sure, but are those three characters Go, Ji, Ra? So is that yeah. how their language operates? Yeah. With that type of characterizations, with a consonant and a vowel together. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm still learning. Yeah. Like this is early, early, early. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you. Where you're still fascinated by it and cited. <laughs> yeah. Before you got frustrated. <laughs> like all day. Like, the very first day, it was essentially trying to teach me greetings. And I feel like I've gotten it now to where I can say it uh, with some fluidity. But I also feel mm -hmm. like I can I fumble if I overthink it. So if I just came up to you, I could be like, Konnichiwa, hajimamashite, watashi wa Steven des dozu yoroshiki. There you go. So, I mean, it sounded lovely, and I'm impressed, and I hope you said a thing. I did. <laughs> I, I said hello. I, uh, I feel like it was something about my name, obviously, because I heard Steven. Mm -hmm. and then... I, I said hello. Nice to meet you. I am Steven. Pleased to meet you. Ah, well, yeah. pleased to meet you. Well, nice. And well done. It's just trying to get that, that flow down. Yeah. But... Uh, it's like I said, it's something I want to do, and I've I've applied it to the point that I want to go beyond just learning it for personal reasons. Like I'm taking it to the extreme that I could possibly use it elsewhere. Well, one bite at a time. Right, right, right. One bite at a time. So, so you don't overwhelm yourself, you know. Well, the beauty of this is the the plan that I set in motion. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a two year plan. So okay. hopefully. This is not something that's like, oh, I'm going to know Japanese by the end of the month. Oh, uh, no, no way. Yeah. No, this is in two years, should mm -hmm. I commit to this like I've, like I've set myself to do, I will know Japanese in two years. At fully. least conversationally for sure. And then we'll see maybe well, more. Well, according to them, I should be able to write it, read it, speak it, everything. Two years. Yeah, all right. So we'll see. We'll see. All right, so on, let's see, what is today? Technically, December 6th, mm -hmm. 2021. We'll um, talk about this in 2023, hopefully. And then we'll just do an entire show in Japanese, and you just nod and be like, all right. Yeah, I'll just be <laughs> in the back going. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh. But think about that. I could play certain games in Japanese because they give you that option. That's true. I can see how that goes. Good. Maybe See if you catch it all. I can <laughs> like, barely catch all the words in English when they go too fast. But now I said, now I did say, uh, and I'm going to try to get through this because I know we're stretching the time. But 
Uh, I said two languages. Mm -hmm. And at the same time as I was sitting there deciding to take on Japanese, I I got another bug up my ass about another language. And I was like, you know, another language I really want to look into? Sign language. Yeah. I actually used to be fluent in ASL. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been many years now, so I wouldn't trust me too much, but I can still get through. Yeah. So I essentially started looking into finding ways to learn sign. And I found mm -hmm. a, a wonderful little app and they show, you know, the motions and you mirror and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And at least talk about nail the alphabet right away. And then at least if you forget something, you can kind of help yourself spell it out. Well, they haven't really gone into great detail with um, Alphabet just yet. Right now, it's some basic commands. So I can say hello or how are you, how are you, thank you, good. I mean, there's. I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lying, that is. <laughs> I, I was surprised how quick, yeah, how fast that one picked up, like I picked up on it because... Uh -huh. Katrina was a little impressed with it. She's like, you're doing really good because I, I just gave her words, you know, that the app kind of tracks the words that I've come across or that I've learned. Mm -hmm. And I just told her, I said, just go down the list, say the word, and then see if I can remember the the sign for it. And she would just do it. And she went through the entire list. And I think one, for, for whatever reason, how was like one of the first ones that I learned. Mm -hmm. And... When she said it, my brain shut off. It was like, how? How? Because I guess in my head, I was going, how you, all the time. How uh -huh. you. Like, it was one thing. And I wasn't equating how oh, as how. its own thing. Yeah. And I was like, how? <laughs> <laughs> what is it on its own? <laughs> and then when I, when I thought about it, I was like, well, damn it. That was like one of the first things I learned. So I started learning to sign, and good, it yeah. was just, I think it's because I'm a visual learner, mm -hmm. and they're showing me how to do it. Like it's literally a visual medium. Yeah, so I'm just sitting there watching them do this, hearing the word, mm -hmm. and then I learn it. There you go. And I was like, ah, okay. So I, I'm not, I don't think it's anything like, uh, I don't feel like that the lessons are easy. I just feel that for me doing it is, might work with your brain a little bit better oh yeah oh yeah like, yeah and i was concerned that it was going to knock japanese out of the way just in the sense that i'm trying to learn two at once but i feel like doing this is not the same as learning japanese so you're more learning like hand motion yeah this like i have to not remember learning a new language i guess yeah right i have to remember my hand gestures and then the and other don't bounce around right you That's a big thing. You have to learn simple. to keep yourself straight, you know, so you're not like there is <laughs> more <Four> people. <laughs> this one threw me. I was surprised that this was a little. What it is essentially that I'm doing is almost like I'm flicking a lighter on Think my Think of my... doing like the world's tiniest violin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember how that we used to do that? Like <laughs> Because I would have thought something like that, you know, pinching your fingers close together yeah. would be like a little, but this mm -hmm. is a little. And I was like, huh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to question it. Whatever you tell me. you deemed it to be. Yeah. You tell me. <laughs> I will go with it. I understand. <laughs> there you go. So. But yeah, hey, hey, let's, uh, I've, I've Stuck done. things. Yeah. I, I just wanted to kind of talk about that because I, I think, I guess the, w the whole main reason I even brought it up, the, I feel like it's giving me a purpose or something. Something to look forward to again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not to say that there aren't things uh, to look forward to, but ever since I've started doing it, it's just, it feels like it's it's giving me some sort of It's triggered that feel-good receptors in the brain. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm not doing this for anybody, but if it winds up helping someone down the line, mm -hmm. because I thought about this, I was like, you know, I don't. I hope that none of my grandkids will ever be deaf, but I don't know that they will never be deaf. So if I have this ability mm -hmm. to communicate with a deaf grandchild at some point, I have it. 
If I yeah. never use it with anybody ever, fine. But I, I've and got you'll it. You'll lose it, so keep practicing it. Trust me, I don't remember as much nearly as I used to. But What I really wanted to do, or what I'd like to do at some point, is to try and utilize it on a regular basis. So if I knew everything that I was trying to say right now, mm-hmm. and I could sign it to you, that's what I'd want to do. Use it enough that I find myself using the hand motions as I'm mm-hmm. speaking to you. So it's just kind of a second nature. Not yeah. that it, I need to, but kind of get into a habit of doing that to where You'll it'll You'll never just... know when you need it. Even when right. I bartended, uh, there was a gentleman who came in that, you know, was deaf. Mm. And, hey... He knew beer, he knew whiskey, he knew how to, and I was just like, you know what, the one time, this is going to help me, cool. And we would sit there and I could actually chit chat with him a little mm-hmm. at the bar, you know? So you yeah. never know. Like, I would have never just expected one day at work, you know, like, oh, here we go. This is when yeah. it's useful. <laughs> you know? Because like, you don't know. But, yeah. I don't know. But I'm, I'm hoping that uh, it continues to give me joy like this, because it's just, well, good. I don't know. Yeah. I feel complete that I'm learning good. something. The, I guess it's maybe it's just the learning process. Yeah. I haven't learned we haven't anything forced in a while. ourselves to sit down and learn. Yeah. Because yeah. we didn't have to. <laughs> I don't but have to give myself homework. <laughs> I want to, damn it. So that's there what I'm you doing. Go. Good for you. What have you been playing? Oh, man. So let's see here. Well, firstly, I did get to play a Quest 2 for the first time Mm -hmm. over the Thanksgiving holidays. One of my nieces had it with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, of course, what do I try? Beat Saber, of course, because what other VR game is there, really? Um, (laughs) But most of you may not even no siblings but i used to play a crap ton of beat saber and actually was pretty freaking good at it mm-hmm. i wasn't like ranking in the world but in this country i was gosh darn it but <laughs> uh, and then i haven't played in over a year and i suck again is what i found out <laughs> well i wouldn't say suck completely because i did still just go straight to expert but like expert plus I was, <gasps> how did i do this you know but it was still over a year, and I had a surgery and would hurt. Like, a whole bunch of stuff had happened since then. Right. <laughs> uh, so my, my, my view of the quest, because I had never played the quest to the standalone, um, get rid of that strap, first thing. Get a new one. That thing was such garbage, I couldn't even handle it. I would try to strap it tight to my face. And, mm-hmm. like, I wouldn't even get halfway through a song before it's already, like, starting to slide because that little thing. Now, granted, seven-year-olds had it. I don't know if they've stretched it already. So let's be fair in that point. But, again, garbage. Like, I need, like, Velcro or something. It's just, like, a little plastic piece, like how an old belt would go, mm-hmm. like, to tighten it. Not good. Get rid of that. Get a get a new one. I'm starting to see why it's $2.99. And then um, the inside-out view while helpful, was extremely nauseating. Oof. Mm. Like, it just felt like it was all over the place. But helpful, I understand. Good points, though. I did like how stupid easy it was just to draw out your play area, and then, boom, you're in. Like, that is very nice. Um, And then, secondly, my only complaint is with the controllers, because I couldn't use my Beat Saber grip on them, because the circles are going the opposite direction of the OG one, like I had, and I was like, I don't know how people play with these. (laughs) (laughs) It kept sliding out of my hands, holding them normally, and then I tried a couple different variations just to mess with it, and I couldn't find one that my hands super liked, but uh, that's just a me thing, because I playing beat saber and to get good there's no way you're gonna hold those controllers like normal you're just not <laughs> they will fly all over the place um so meh. meh but if that's your only option for standalone vr still was pretty good i thought the 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 screen door effect was very minimal mm-hmm. uh, my other complaint would be i couldn't get it to stay focused um i have a super low ipd and uh, these do not have the slider. It's an automatic IPD adjuster. So I think if you're on the far end of the spectrums where you have a high one or a low one, this sucks. Mm. Because, like, it would eventually start to get fuzzy on me when it's staying on my face. I know, right? Um, and I think it's because it was trying to 
find how to focus for my eyes. And so I couldn't do it for very long. But on my old Rift, I had the slider underneath yeah. so I could adjust it on my own. Uh, so that would be, I think, a complaint for me. I feel like they got to let you manually do your IPD adjustments. Because now sure. I would have to return it. Because if it was going to constantly be fuzzy for me off and on during play, screw that. Like it, some people, it already takes too long to build up a stomach for VR and mm-hmm. then to give them that. <laughs> I think you're just asking for problems. Lots of sick tummies. Um, but a review on the Quest 2 that no one asked for. Uh, and then I played RimWorld for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not new. It's been out for a while. Yeah. Um, new to you. I think. New to me, new to me. Um, I think Prison Architect, me getting into that was when I was finally like, you know what? I should just try Root World. Because like Prison Architect was like triggering this need to build strategy portion of my brain for some reason. Um, but let me tell you, it's not exactly what I expected. <laughs> I was not good. And uh, granted, you're like, oh, the first time you played a game, you're not good at it. Wah, wah, wah. But... I I honestly didn't look into spoilers. I didn't look at guides. I didn't look at any of that stuff. I try to go into them as best as I can to learn it on my own. And then if it just starts to get overwhelmingly stuck, I might look up like a hint. Like, where is this thing located? Because it's the micromanagement is insane. Mm-hmm. So sometimes my problem would be trying to find a thing. I'm like, how do I, where is it? How do I, there's so many options. So that was what I was Googling, like, where is this button? <laughs> I got so sick of, like, searching how to build or something. But so you're just like you play people. Well, depending on which scenario. So the first scenario I just chose, your you're people crash landed. I think we're, like, in the year 5000 or something, and we just crash landed on this land, you mm. know, and go, survive. But it's a, basically telling a story. So they don't say, like, people die. They say, like, dramatic events happen. And it's true. true. Like, little pop-up dialogues will happen about, like, so-and-so talking to so-and-so. But it was so cute. I finally had a run yesterday where I didn't kill everybody. Um, Not until, like, a few months later. Not everyone, though. Stupid cougar attacked my people. And he was by himself out there hunting. And damn it, you know. Hmm. Tried to save him, but he bled out. And then we just dropped him halfway through, which is hilarious. And cannibalism is an option. Oh. Yeah. Just an, okay. It is an option. It is an option. I haven't let them do it yet. Good. Because I can play God. I can't decide what their food restrictions and stuff are. Um, but, I mean, it's a possibility. I am actually sure. have it in my head right now that I kind of want to play because you can also um, harvest organs. I wow. might have to do a streak, like a very evil playthrough like that just to see but <clears throat> anyway I have one run now where there are a few months in I have lots of food I kind of don't know what I'm supposed to do now <laughs> like they say end goal I guess is like when all when you've researched all of enough of the options that you can build like your transport pod or something and you can get off the colony or if you want to just sit there and see how big you can make your freaking colony you could do that mm. um so keep that in mind but it's hilarious and apparently the first time everyone died on me, this man in black just appears because I was like, well, I guess this is game over because, like, you can't really just bring in new people all the time, you know. And uh, I think he was supposed to be, like, my Hail Mary. Like, oh, we see all the people you brought died. Here you go. Here's one guy. And then when I sent him to uh, try to rescue one of them, the thing call- killed him, too. So I was like, <laughs> well... Uh, I think he's dead now also, and I have no one to play because like getting new people is, a, is, is rough because mm-hmm. you kind of have to rely on so far anyway. I don't know if people give babies. I've had people fall in love. I've given them double beds and stuff. I've not seen any pregnancies on humans yet. My horses did though. <laughs> My horses, I captured their little hearts uh, above their head and they're like nose to nose. And I took a screenshot because I thought it was so cute. And then I have like three little baby foals now. Aww. I know. It's cute. I'm trying to figure out what to do with them, though, because unfortunately I have to feed them. So I might have to sell them. I don't know. <laughs> if somebody wants baby horses I, in this world, I'll find out. <laughs> now, you know what it made that funnier? Hmm. Is if you saw the sweetness with the horses and you saw the hearts and it looked like, aww. And then suddenly the other horse gets up behind the other one. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> 
this was a nice moment. <laughs> go in the gir- go in the barn. Uh, but I have a little, a couple of alpacas now too, and um, some turkeys and hens. Gobble gobble. And roosters, of course, so mm-hmm. I can keep keep having eggs. <laughs> sure. And whatever. Anywho, so that was the other one that I dove into for the last two days. And so I probably, I could see me being addicted to it for like another week or so. Um, there are other scenarios and stuff like that. So if I want to get insanely bad at it or like have it rough, but I think I need to learn a little bit more on how to just keep the regular people alive in a regular scenario mm-hmm. before I move on to like one of the soul crushing ones. Uh, but yeah. And then uh, Red Dead 2, just a little bit. I've got to finish the story. I'm on the John Marston part, and for some reason, it's been harder for me to go back and finish that last little bit of story now that Arthur's done. Mm. Maybe I'm just sad. Maybe. Oh, spoiler, I guess. Sorry. Now that I'm not playing Arthur anymore, I was kind of like, not that I dislike John Marston. Obviously, I enjoyed the first one, but I don't know why it's been harder to get me to go back and finish it. Because you felt like you finished the story and now they're extending it out. I guess technically I did. Like I wrapped up Arthur Morgan's story. Yeah, that was the story you were following. And then it's just like, then they added this on. It's like, uh, I mean. It's not that I wasn't enjoying it, but I no, guess no, no, like no. when my wife took off and everything and I'm like, so I feel like they're just building me up for the first one. Clearly it's just going to put me wherever the first one started and um, which is cool. Yeah. Totally respect it. Great bonus. Um, not that I'm just, I am enjoying it, but yeah, for some reason it's just been harder to get me. What, what do I have? Like a couple hours maybe left? Something you know? like that. It's, it's yeah. not very long, but I mean, I, I get where you're coming from. Cause when they did that, when I played it and it got to mm-hmm. that part, I was like, but I was done. And then wh- why are we? Maybe extent- it was that too. I put so much time in it and I thought I'm done now. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, it just keeps going. Yeah. It's like this really <laughs> extended epilogue mad. that's unnecessary, you know? Yeah, but I I think it is a neat idea though. Like it to, is to to pull the two together, right? Um, but it really felt unnecessary since we know John's story from mm-hmm. that game. And but I guess it's a prequel. We're supposed to be building up to. to I don't whatever. Anyway, it makes sense now. You're like, oh, okay, I see where John came from. Cool. But um, that that was it. That was it. I played a little Prison Architect, though, but put that down when I moved on to, to RimWorld. Hmm. Um, yeah, what about you? I really didn't play a lot this week. I just, I guess Japanese I'm not... Japanese takes a lot of time. Yeah, I oh, just, I've rough. not really been in the mood, though. I mean, even when oh. I thought about it, it's just been kind of like... That's eh. fair. Like, that I played uh, Claymates, where I, I think I talked about playing that or just kind of revisiting that for a minute. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a lot of time to play it because you know the moment i started everybody wants to play the switch so it's like right well here take it i have to get you a second one so then i go to the playstation trying to find something that i had played or something that might interest me and i forgot that i had gotten an old game called flashback do you remember that Mm -mm. it reminded me of that other game uh i think it it's known as another world but it also has gone by out of this world and it's one of those computer games where the characters kind of look uh, polygonal, but they kind of have that slow moving, you know, motion to them to where it's trying to be more realistic. Yeah. And then you have to kind of figure out how you play just so uh, mm-hmm. it's kind of in that same vein, except uh, not quite <laughs> like there's some added elements to it. Uh, but it, it reminded me a lot of that. And I remember playing it back on the Super NES uh you know, back in the 90s sometime. Uh-huh. And I saw that they had done this anniversary edition and I had yet to uh, play it, so I decided to play it. And I don't know if I'm getting into that either. <laughs> you know? Sometimes it happens. Like, I'm Where sitting you just there... sit there and, like, stare at your game list and you might even start one or two and then mm-hmm. as soon as it loads up, you're like, but no. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I played it for a minute and I guess the way it... Not really the controls. I guess it's just the way everything's kind of laid out. It's just mm-hmm. not doing it right for me, you know? Mm. So, I don't know. I wasn't having a lot of fun, so I turned it off. And then I, I messed around with uh, Rogue... Was it Rogue... Not Rogue Squadron. Whatever that last EA Squadron. Oh, yes. Yeah, squadron. Pew, pew. Yeah. Played that for a minute. Eh, you know, that's <laughs> another one that, you know, I, I should like this. And I do have fun with it there for a minute, but then I'm just kind of over it and then i even uh, i even went back to friday the 13th for for a brief minute just, oh yeah 
just because the multiplayer and, one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess is it's it, still, are they still have servers going at everything then? Eh? That, oh, that's, that's right. They did have somebody else. Yeah, they had kinda. some kind of set server. And I didn't really do a lot of the server stuff. I just went on and played with bots because why not? Right. Okay. And that was That's frustrating. An option. That's always the way to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, at least they gave us ways to play the game. So if their servers ever shut down, mm-hmm. there's not, it's not you a waste still of time. Have something to show for your money. Yeah. Because yeah. I even like the, uh, what did they add in? It was almost like scenarios. So it's like, oh, here, you're going to play in this area. There's going to be these kids. And you got to go kill them and go. And then oh, you just have to do that. Fine. Yeah, I, I thought it was. Because yeah. you've just got to figure I'll out. have to load it back up again and see. Because I, I mean, I hadn't really played it since. Not that the controversy swayed me in any way. But you no. know how long it I can stay in the multiplayer games like that. Sure. Usually. Very quick minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, just the single player campaigns is fun enough. Just if you're looking for some kind of. I don't of think str- it had it though when I was doing it. I probably like not. I don't remember any single players. So that's why I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, maybe I need to go back and check now. Well, think of it like a, a strategy, like Hitman. Like you're Jason, oh, okay. and yeah. you've you've got a situation. You got to kill all these kids, and you get extra points for being creative. Uh, just, oh, see, now that would be fine. Yeah. Okay, get I'll have and- to go back and visit. I know I fun. have it. Hey, uh, give us some news. Let's you do some news? news. Well, we kind of started talking about this earlier. As you said, we would probably chat about it a little later on. Could be good news. Could, Could be good be. news. We mm-hmm. will have to wait and see. But uh, news broke this week that a group of lawmakers in the U.S. Um, are introducing legislation to ban the use of automated bots that buy up retail goods from websites. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm for this, of course. We've been saying something like this should have been happening for quite a few years, even before oh, yeah. this last round of uh, garbage people <laughs> took over. But this past Monday, last week, uh, four U.S. representatives are pushing for what they're calling the Stopping Grinch Bots Act. Uh, the plan is to crack down on the bot technology, of course, that, well, we have seen over the last two years, but it's been around for a while. It's not a new thing. Um, but how it fast it moves through our government, of course. Um, we had to wait till it got bad, bad, you know, because apparently this bill was introduced in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, of course, the problem has exploded since then. So, you know, we had to wait till it was like, oh, wait, now it's super bad. So maybe we should talk about this again. Uh, but after trying this year, more representatives apparently are feeling for the parents this holiday season who can't get anything without being willing to pay over MSRP. Um, so the proposed legislation, uh, it, it expands now from the 2016 law that was passed uh, outlawing bots from circumventing control measures like the ones that were already buying for tickets for concerts and things like that. Um, so in 2016, that law came out. They're looking to expand on that now to include more Goods and services. Mm-hmm. Um, so the law made it illegal for scalpel, scalpel, blah, blah, blah. scalpel, yeah, scalpers <laughs> to resell the tickets obtained through the bot. So the Stopping Grinch Bots Act would apply the same principles to all online retail sites. Uh, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission would be the ones tasked with enforcement should this go through. Um, so maybe this time it'll move faster because we're in supply chain issue days and maybe. government wants their chips too. So <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, siblings, we here at Super Mega Crash have been saying for a long time it should include luxury goods because it's just nonsense. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm hopeful but knowing how long it's been actually proposed and everything, that made more sense to me. I'm like, oh, it was proposed. Yeah, that tracks that it's two years later and we're talking sure. about it again because it was in November, oddly enough. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I would love for it to pass, but we know how fast everything moves through oh, there. Yeah. So. It just depends on what's most important. It definitely won't be in time for y'all this year. I'll tell you that. So nope. you're just going to have to not buy it is my recommendation yeah it's my recommendation your child should learn patience and the value of a dollar too so while they may really badly want it you are still the parent and could be like no i will buy you a 500 hundred dollar console not a two thousand dollar console it's the same damn thing Mm -hmm. don't do it parents you have food to buy (laughs) it's not don't do it uh so the next piece that caught my eye because 
I think this is the most annoying freaking thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, take two interactive. Ugh. Again, at it. I mean, I feel like once a year we're talking about some really garbage thing Take Two did. Um, but as many of us are probably aware by now, especially with the Game Awards coming up, because that kind of, you know, was when I first read about it. Um, Hayes Light Studio, who's the indie team under the EA banner, released a game earlier this year titled It Takes Two, which is a co-op action adventure platform game from the same team that developed A Way Out. Mm -hmm. Um, which by the way, (laughs) it takes two has been nominated for five awards, including game of the year from the game awards, which we'll be talking about next week, Mm -hmm. but up against games like death loop, Metroid dread, psychonauts to ratchet and clank rift apart and resident evil village. The Hobbs and I played it. It's fun. I recommend it. I recommend it, but enter bigger company that was butt hurt to intimidate take two. So Take-Two Interactive has been known to go on a tirade trademarking literal words, and this is no exception. Mm -hmm. Uh, They claim they own the words Rockstar, Bully, and Take-Two, for example. See where I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. Leading me to now, they are trying to claim that the game It Takes Two is profiting off their brand because the words Take-Two is in the title, and a ton of fans are wandering around confused on how to go about getting this game. Do I go to Take-Two? Do I buy a game called It Takes Two? Literal chaos, I'm sure, was happening in the streets. This is why Take-Two had to come in. Um, So they sent their trademark claim to Hazelight Studios because of It Takes Two and forcing Hazelight to just abandon any ownership of the game's name. The one time I would like EA to step up with their money. Hello? Mm -hmm. Hello? Um, It Takes Two is a common turn of phrase. Yeah. Yeah. I'm... (sighs) And, and, (sighs) it takes, takes, plural. Takes with an S. Not Mm -hmm. take, takes. Mm Mm-hmm. Just no, saying. they're just a big bully butthurt company. Over they're just what? a big bully company. <laughs> like there, the nobody was doesn't... confused no. between this game and your company. I'll just say that now. You're just a big bully. Maybe why you want to trademark the name bully. Yeah. Um evidenced by a notice of abandonment sent to the US Patent Office shortly after Take Two's claim on the name was filed. Now, I couldn't find any details on whether there even is plans to rename it since it seems like it wouldn't even really be worth their time looking into it, but the game's already out, been doing its thing for a while now. So um, according to Eurogamer, who reached out to Hazelight for comment, spokesperson simply just said they can't comment on any ongoing disputes, but they're hopeful it'll be resolved. Um, But the team also did not comment on how this had impacted Hazelight's ability to sell it or market it moving forward from here on out. Do you have to rename the game? Uh, what if you had a potential sequel? You know, like, I'm pissed off that they granted it to them, firstly. Yeah. I really think that we need to stop patenting people with literal freaking words that we use every day. Some play on it, sure. Some fancy way to spell it, maybe. All right. But how the crap do we allow companies to own words and turns of phrase? Mm-hmm. Like, that just... Anyway... U.S. Patent Office record shows Take-Two is behind filings to contest numerous names with connections to the words, like I said, Rockstar, Social Club, Mafia, Civilization. Just wanted to show you how petty they are. Um, these include a Beijing company's trademark of the brand Starux, which was the name of the closing brand, clothing brand Max Fain. It's too close. It was too mm-hmm. close. Mm-hmm. Plus numerous restaurants, tattoo parlors, and other small businesses who had used the word rock star in their name. So it's not just gaming companies they're going after. Don't you dare be a company that exists anywhere and try to take one of our names. Don't you do it. Um, and the reason why this was taken down, the th- their, their, their motto, mm-hmm. think like a rock star. Kiss which my was a ass. brand behind music books for live performances, abandoned its trademark after Take Two's legal claim, Rockstar Axe Throwing, for a Florida axe throwing company. And meanwhile, trying to oppose Take Two's trademark grab through well, now caught in a messy series of extensions and challenges to all of these different words. So, so you see how petty it's not just gamers. Did they not try to go after Rockstar Energy Drink? Well, I, mean, I actually, I'm, I didn't think about that to try to see if they did. I mean, why not? They're saying Rockstar. I, it's true. Well, who came first, I guess. 
did have to look yeah. when do they all um uh, which again i'm sure they weren't the first to use it but uh, well so, yeah. i mean if if they want to play petty what about the who sang that song it takes two you know didn't they i mean they should maybe be, they should sue rockstar yeah and be like hey you know what we Was wrote that this song, song around before take two publishing? long before so there you go um record labels do your thing i know you're good about this stuff yeah Hop on so that. why not? I would love to see it happen back to them, and they have to lose all of those words. <sighs> I mean, it's the same thing. Same it's so thing. Petty. I drop. It's so petty. I drop in there and be like, "Hey, yeah, you know what? You you make a good point here. You know, yeah. I think I think we're gonna sue you. I understand you now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So can we have that word back? Yeah. Yeah. That's ours. We had that first. <sighs> I hate this so much, but. <laughs> It's just so ridiculous. The article goes on to point out, if you look at the trial and appeals board, which this is the one I had to, I just to make them sound even more petty. uh, You can see that take two has filed at least extension requests for 25 challenges in the last three months. Most other gaming companies have to go back six or seven years to get that number. Wow. So take two is being very, very aggressive. This is the one time, like I said, EA, can you step up? It's your indie team. Like, you put it under your banner. Use your freaking money and sue them back over something. There's got to (laughs) be. The one time I want EA to do something. (laughs) Well, they're probably sitting there saying, yeah, we'd probably do that too. So It's a great game. I want everyone to go buy It Takes Two because there's no reason in the world it shouldn't be called It Takes Two because it takes two of them to play the damn game. But you see... If this game would have been a failure, we wouldn't be hearing about this. Oh God! Well, maybe. I promise. So no, people I promise think you. Take Two Publisher is failing because this game is mm-hmm. failing, and there's all these confused gamers wandering around GameStop, not knowing what to do and who to complain at. <laughs> so, is it takes two? Is that like the game company, or is that a game? Did they make that game? I, yeah, just, do I, need I to just don't understand. Today? I just don't understand. It's yeah. confusing me massive crowds so i mean does that mean that i can play grand theft auto and it takes two because they, they said might, take they two. might own the words grand theft auto too <sighs> separately they own anyway. grand, they own theft and they own auto so mm-hmm. we'll see because we'll be very confused about that too when i go to buy a car yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel like i don't understand I'm here to Why buy. Why is Take a... Two not selling me this car? <laughs> Why? Why? All right. Uh, moving on. Sony uh, kind of overhauling the PS Plus. I saw this yeah. week a little announcement on that. So uh, obviously, probably wanting to compete with the Game Pass. They haven't really had anything that like super competes with that service. Um, so I I kind of look at this as their competitive swing. Um, the service is codenamed Spartacus for the time being and will Spartacus? allow PlayStation owner Spartacus. I mean, it's kind of a cool name. <laughs> I hope they just leave it that way. Subscribe to Spartacus. That would be amazing. <laughs> um, but it will allow PlayStation owners to pay a monthly fee, duh, and get access to a catalog of modern and classic games coming from people in the know, of course, who stayed anonymous because mm-hmm. people aren't allowed to talk, but they do anyway. I guess NDAs don't really do much. <laughs> If you can keep it anonymous. So, I didn't look into this. I only saw the headlines. Mm-hmm. So, maybe you can clarify. Is this as a, a different service to the PlayStation Plus service that they yeah. have now? Or is it going to replace what they're doing currently? It looks like they're merging it. So, so it will be an all-in-one. Right. So, okay. it, the, the way it looked like they're going to, ex- uh, the existing services Plus and Now will kind of just get merged into one. It looks like Plus is going to be the one, the name they might keep. I got you. Uh, so, with the Plus, that gives access for most online multiplayer games, and you get like a game or two a month now. That's what you're getting. Um, so, now gamers... Uh, well, and then PlayStation Now, if I'm phrasing it right, allows gamers to stream or download older titles, mm-hmm. right? So according to the branding, the PS Plus name will stay, and they plan on phasing out the PS Now name. While they're still finalizing the details, uh, the documentation did outline three different plans that they could offer. 
Uh, so the first would be kind of like the existing benefits you have now mm-hmm. uh, that comes with PlayStation Plus. Uh, the second would offer a larger catalog of PlayStation 4 and when more becomes available, PlayStation 5 games. Uh, then the third would add extended demos, game streaming, and a library of PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and PSP games for the third tier. So Sony is also putting resources into expanding its efforts into cloud gaming, I saw. Um but I think that um, might just be more for like analytics and stuff. And then sure. that might be something that's added on there too. Um, it's another wait and see situation, but I mean, it stands good reason that this would of course be in the works. I mean, everything seems like it has come with a grain of salt, but game pass is pretty freaking great. So I, you kind of to compete with that one, two, three and PSP. That sounds pretty cool. Actually. I've been saying for a while that they <laughs> needed to, use PlayStation Now as a Game Pass. Like, I know what they've been doing over there has been interesting uh, or similar, but there Mm -hmm. are those elements that they're holding back on. But to use PlayStation Plus and Now to get... Like, yeah, I've been, been, you know, preaching this for a while because I thought this would be the way to go. You've got Mm -hmm. two items. Just smash it. Two good services, yeah. Yeah, smash it together, serve it up, under one price plan, because that's why I didn't want to pay for PlayStation Now. I didn't want to pay for yet another thing. Smash right. it together with the PlayStation Plus. Let me get what I want out of it, and boom, you got right. me. Right. You've got now, me now. Of course, we don't know how much it'll be. Mm-hmm. I would imagine probably the same price for the first tier, roughly, anyway. You know, you know what they have the opportunity to do? Oh, what's the that? same thing they've done to Xbox, where, you know, it's... Microsoft comes out on the stage and be like, "Hey, here's our thing. It's gonna be four ninety nine and Sony's like three ninety nine and then it's yeah. like, oh my God, <laughs> so Nintendo and their uh you know online eighty dollars it was like, thing, yeah. yeah, for eighty bucks, you can play these ten n sixty four games that you know and love, and they and only kinda f- work, <laughs> yeah, and you're just like, yeah, no, no, I'm not doubling my payment. Sony's gonna come out and be like, yeah. So, uh, PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, all that stuff, uh, you know, 60, 70 bucks. And be like, oh, they my God. would have to. Because if you think about it, Game Pass is like 9 to 12 a month. Mm-hmm. Or you could pay for the year. So, I would think you would have to be $120 or less a year to compete. Yeah. And then the only difference would be, I guess it depends on when more PlayStation 5 games come out and see how that is. Because I was going to say the only difference is with Game Pass, you're getting new games that are coming to it obviously not every game and this is serving up older games you've probably already played still love the idea i'm just wondering if they're gonna let you do that with new playstation only games i feel that sony would money sony would be remiss if they didn't offer up exclusives or a or or like you said maybe something that's coming out so like uh say if this was to start in February, Horizon, you know, it's available immediately, which... Right. That would be great. But how great. would you make more money off of PlayStation-exclusive games? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, the, the PC, you know, they they have expanded into the PC market. Maybe that's, right. maybe that's the hook. You know, they can afford to offer up these new games if you're going to sell them elsewhere. But see, I feel like what Game Pass did is because you're trying it for free on Game Pass. You've already put your time, effort, achievements, growing, everything into that platform. Mm -hmm. So your odds of if it goes off Game Pass is more likely for you to buy it on Microsoft because you're not going to want to lose all of your work. Right. So I feel like that's how they get you. Well, I guess if PlayStation just stopped offering it for free... And then if you really wanted it, you would just have to buy it then at that point. Because, I mean, I've, stuff doesn't stay on Game Pass forever. I've got a great idea. Because mm. for someone like myself, uh-huh. this would be... Like, I feel like I could talk myself out of it depending on the game. But in other games, I probably would be like, how bad do I want it? Uh-huh. Say it's a brand new release. We'll, we'll use Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon mm-hmm. Forbidden West exclusively on PlayStation Plus now or whatever the Spartacus oh, Spartacus yeah. okay Spartacus. we're going to present yeah, it yeah. you can play the you can play the entire game on there but there's a catch no trophies if you want trophies 
then you purchase. You have to go to the purchased and buy it for yourself. Mm, I don't know they could get away with that though. Game Pass. Why gives not? You trophies. I'm Why just saying. Not? Game Pass not? gives you trophies, and That's you bullshit. know it'll just be like Microsoft let us watch this. <laughs> I'm just saying. I can hear it already. <laughs> The console wars would just keep on going, or I guess the side wars at this point. Like, so but I mean, think about it. You, how bad do you want to play? Um, like, if you just want to play the game, you want to experience, you go right there. But if you want to get those achievements, then you have to pay for it. I mean, I mean just, I, achievements are enough to get people to do it, which is funny to me. Think about it. I remember when we didn't have achievements, people, <laughs> and maybe <laughs> just played it. And maybe I'm talking like one of these, you know, suits. At the, the board table or something yeah, like that. Maybe I'm that one of these. sound kind of evil. <laughs> <laughs> they do not get the trophy. <laughs> they want a new costume? Three ninety nine. dollars <laughs> Okay. my mustache. Yeah. Uh, anyway, keep we'll going. see, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, of course, this is, uh, we're talking next year for plans, so we'll just keep our eye out on it. I think you're right. January February ish is probably when we'll start hearing more mm-hmm. finalized plans on what this service will be. But here we go, Sony. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, quick hits. Quick hits. Got a few quick hits. Uh, GTA Trilogy finally got your update again. <laughs> <laughs> you should be on 1.03 now, which, you know, just fixes more stuff. Sure. But it's basically fixing all the stuff we were memeing. So we're not going to have as much fun online anymore. But mm. um, it did bring some stability improvements, fix some textures, add cinematic camera mode because we needed that first. Sure. <laughs> um, you can check out the laundry list of fixes, of course, over on Rockstar's website. And updates supposed to be available across all platforms. Look like the Switch was the only one to lag behind. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's amazing that, you know, it takes them weeks to fix this, and if they had just delayed the game a couple of weeks. I, I'm telling you, yeah, like, some of the fixes are just, you could tell it was, like, definitely AI upscaled, and then I just feel like nobody played it. Yeah. It's, nobody played it. Uh, anywho, uh, moving on. A Reddit user discovered a leak on the PSN store. We're all about them leaks mm-hmm. for the Matrix Awakens, an mm-hmm. Unreal Engine 5 experience. Now is everything data mining, grain of salt. Uh, but with the new movie coming out, why not? Why yeah, wouldn't why not? I could see it being a thing. Uh, I don't think it's a game, though, because it reads experience. So yeah. I feel like, like the Jurassic Park experience or heck, maybe even like that Spider-Man's. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many years ago they did that where it was like a little bit of gameplay in that one, but not really. Uh, so we'll see. It could be yeah. cool. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, uh, on how they do it. I mean, I'm I'm all for an experience. Sure. Why not? I think they're cool movies. I think they're cool. And I, I plan on seeing the new one. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> I didn't have like any expectations for a new one. But I, I've been kind of reading uh, interviews here and there with mm-hmm. uh, Keanu. With people that are returning. Ke- yeah. Keanu. That's Keanu. That, the guy. I don't America's know why. America's sweetheart. We he love is. him. How dare you? But he was talking about what kind of a different movie this is without really explaining what makes it different. Mm-hmm. And it just made me want to see it even more. I was like, all right, well, you're selling me on this. It's not like I wasn't sold on it already. But right. to know that it's not just going to be a rehash. I was like, you're selling, you're doing a great job selling me because that was my concern. You know, I that feel we're like just with these, it's it. not much. I just kind of go in knowing it's just like things that'll look cool that doesn't make any sense and I just have to suspend all disbelief. Mm-hmm. Uh, like John Wick. <laughs> yeah. I know I'm just going in because it's really cool gun foo. You know what I mean? Like, there's no like real deep story. <laughs> it's just, it's I mean, all about the action. Dog, you know, exactly. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this was from last week, but since we didn't do news last week, um, mm-hmm. in case you missed it, I thought you might find this interesting. Kojima Productions launches a new LA based film and TV division. Uh, yeah. The I division will be that. led by a uh, former PlayStation business executive, Riley Russell, who will work to turn Kojima Productions property into a pop culture franchise. Woo. It says beyond the world of video games. So, I mean, he already is creating cinematic experiences in video games. Why not? Why wouldn't this be, like, the next gradual step in this whole thing? Uh, let's see here. Epic acquired Harmonix, which is the dev team mm-hmm. behind the Rock Band games. Mm-hmm. Um, and they acquired them for <gasps> Fortnite! Uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> 
can't wait to see how this is. Fortnite. But uh, Harmonic says that their rhythm-based game will now be used to bring unique brand of musical gaming experiences to the Fortnite metaverse. Harmonic says it will now work with Epic Games to create musical journeys and gameplay for Fortnite. So uh, DLC for Rock Band is still planned, though, guys. So if you were like, what? No, they're still making those. You're good. So... <laughs> Are they gonna allow play? Because I don't know anything about Fortnite. I really don't. So, I, I'm but I'm to just think it's like those concerts, maybe, and then you'll have like a QTE event or something. So, are you gonna be able to create your own concert? Maybe. Oh, you can maybe. Create your own band in Fortnite, and then it could be like, "Come check out the Raging Alcoholics." And then, bah, 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 bah. I don't know. I mean, uh, it could be. And actually, that could be kind of fun with your friends for a little bit. I don't know about the staying power. But, <laughs> but I'm also impressed Fortnite is still this big. So what do I know? Yeah. Like, there's a part of me that just wants to step in and look around. But uh, at the same time, I don't. Right. You know. I never did the, mul- the online one. Mm. The only time I ever played Fortnite um was when it was still just a tower defense game and they still wanted forty dollars for it mm-hmm. i didn't pay it mind you it was given to me but um yeah still and then i want to say like within months of that all of a sudden like the online blew up and i was like but the tower defense like just with ai and everything that was kind of fine mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know that i want to try to fight other people um and this is another one for steven Live action Mega Man movie rumored to be in the works over at Netflix. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. So, I wanted to see how you feel about it. I was like, wanted to see your reaction. Depends on who's doing it. Who's like, I'm very ah. particular about my Mega Man. Well, so let's see here. So uh, the site Rockman Corner describes people over at the Churnin Entertainment are the ones working on it. Um, and it's for Netflix. In addition to adaptations of Nemesis based on the comic by Mark Miller. Hmm. The Monkey Wrench, Wrench Gang based on the novel by Edward Abbey and a family adventure comedy called Runaway. So as far as Mega Man's current credit goes, the film is being directed and written by the duo Henry Joost. And Ariel Schulman, who produced Masi Oka and is also being co-written by the Batman's Matson Tomlin, who was brought back in 2020, which was interesting for a writer from the Batman. Mm. So that's after I have all that. Now, what do you think? If you even know those names, I just well, figured you might know them before I would be more of a movie buff. So, uh, somewhat I, I won't say that i'm like hugely familiar with their work uh their names somewhat familiar yeah. vaguely but the shulman sounded familiar but i uh, you know i want nice anything when i looked them up so. yeah you know i want to be excited um i know that netflix is is really leaning hard into uh oh god they are like old properties adaptations of video games and all sorts of stuff yeah like i know that um a lot of people right now are they've got their eye on the last airbender live action Mm -hmm. uh yeah but did people not respond kindly to that no that was the movie that in like Shyamalan or Shyamalan why can't I say I I never watched it but I remember people were not happy (laughs) well let me let me kind of give you a brief rundown as to why because I was like I wasn't it wasn't something that I grew up with or or knew about before I met my wife but she was like a huge uh, last airbender and she's like you really got to check this out you really got to check this out now me personally I'm sitting there thinking cartoon Nickelodeon eh because I've seen Nickelodeon cartoons. Not that I have a problem with a lot of them or anything like that. It's just some of it's not for me. Sure. So when she's sitting there trying to push this on me, not that it was a forceful thing, but, you know, just pushing, pushing. Like, Back in the day when you were pretending to like what she liked, you know. You yeah. Know how so I was just like, <laughs> you know, ah, fine, whatever. So I relented. I watched it. And I was surprised how much I got into it because it wasn't just a kid's cartoon there was a there was a deep story to it sure. a lot of care and effort put into what this was about so mm-hmm. i could you could tell the, the the care and the love that was put into the martial arts the story everything mm-hmm. like this wasn't just some slapdash little thing that some idea somebody had 
But M. Night Shyamalan, and I feel like I'm saying his name wrong for some reason, but hit. I think that's right. He took the first season of this show and crammed it into 90 minutes. Okay. Ooh. Twelve so lots of stuff had to have been mace. Yeah, twelve plus episodes, <laughs> and it may have been more than that, but crammed it into ninety minutes. So it's pretty much like watching it at warp speed, and so the, nothing's getting developed. Nothing's getting. You have <laughs> so no you're connection. Just, like super confused. Yeah, you're you're just like, like no going, Whoa, where are, are we built? going? Why are we here? <laughs> Furthermore, everybody's miscast in the worst possible way, and when I say miscast, I mean this is supposed to be characters of. Like, this is the one time, not the one time, this is blatant mm-hmm. um, whitewashing. Ugh. Okay? Every, the three main characters, you had Inuit people, and then I think Aang was supposed to be, they say it's like a monk, but I so guess. So he just, like, screwed it all up. Oh, yeah, they're all white. Uh, of the course. The Fire Nation people, they, from what I remember culturally from the show, from the animated show, they should have been Chinese, if I'm if I'm correct. Okay. They were Indian. Okay? Not to say that there's anything wrong with that, but I just feel like each nation represented a certain culture. You know right. what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So, and I might be getting that wrong, but either it was supposed to be... Like I said, each each one represented a different culture. They he didn't give it a thought. Wow. So what this show on Netflix is trying to do is they're trying to, I mean, every casting choice they've had, it's mm-hmm. been culturally appropriate. It's like they're finding the right people to portray. And probably wasn't hard to do. Yeah. So, <laughs> like Jesus. In a long so, way to go back around. A long to Mega way to Man. go. I was like, who, who, who would you? Okay, who do you? Who would you like to see as Mega Man? I think I'd want to see uh, an unknown. It's Chris Pratt. Come on. Oh, everyone wants Chris Pratt and everything, right? No. <laughs> I think I'd want to see an unknown because I can't think yeah, of anybody. And and how are they going to approach Mega Man? Is he going to be a kid? Is he going to be, because depending on where you go, he's he's supposed to be like kid or childlike. So do you go uh, teenager, which, you know, that could be fair enough. I like kind I, of hope not, just because like teenagers are fine. I just can't do an entire show based on their being stupid to further plot points. Sorry, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's lazy and it's horrible. And every time any show or something uses it, I get so bent out of shape. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah, this is so dumb. Anywho. So, so I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping for an adult version, <laughs> which I mean, that's, you could do that. I think the, the only reason they've done like the kid stuff in the past is, you know, like Astro boy, Pinocchio kind of those mm. parallels to what he's supposed to be. I just, I want a great story out of it. Don't yeah. w- don't hide away or shy away from the source material because there's a good story. There's a good foundation for a story. I know the first game didn't necessarily, you know, flesh out this big story, but mm-hmm. you have you have the foundation for one. Two scientists looking to change the world with their creations and then one says, "No, nah, I'm going to take over," you know, based on what you did. Mhm. It's it's simple. It's easy, but you can flesh it out. You can really bring some humanity in a story about a robot think, trying to find humanity. Do you think they would have a little bit more liberties? I feel like if they stuck to the main story point there in like how it develops without yeah. angering a fan base because it's a little more If they can flesh it open. out with without you know, I'm I understand that when it comes to television uh, changing from video games to books and things like that. Yes, yeah, the medium is different, so you have to make uh, adjustments. Sure. Yeah. Anytime I hear some people say, well, it's not like the book. Yeah, because not we everything's going to be. translate. We can't do 10-hour movies, guys. So, yeah. <laughs> So with this, I'm willing to give certain things a pass. Uh, okay. As long as it's not, as long as you're not taking away from the core element of who that character is. Superman. Man of Steel, he kills Zod, snaps his neck in half. No, I'm not giving that a pass because you know what? That's not Superman. Yeah. That's not Superman. So Mega Man, if they're just like, well, yeah, he was, uh, 
he was a guy, but then he died, and then we turned him into like a RoboCop. And no, then he was like mega. Nope. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely not. You've lost me because now you're yeah. uh, pissing on what Mega Man is. Mm-hmm. So if you make any changes like that, if Doctor Light is not Doctor Light, if Doctor Wily is not Doctor Wily, you can you can give them all the backstories you want because there's things we don't know. But at the end of the day, they need to be those characters, who they are. I would even I would even give them a pass if they kind of tweaked Wiley's motivations a little bit. Still evil, but maybe it's not just like well domination. Ah ha ah, ah. Because right. screw that. Who cares? Right. A little me bit a better, more of a reason yeah. behind being that devious. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a better reason. I'm all for that. Mm-hmm. But as long as we are still kind of going through that same motion, build the emotion, build the understanding, mm-hmm. help me sympathize. Yeah. Maybe I start to look at it from from Wiley's perspective. That would be great. That'd be good writing. Mm-hmm. Right? So. Well, interesting. Well, then I can't wait to see what happens and pick your brain on the thoughts, on your thoughts then. Yeah. That was the whole reason why I chose it. I was just curious to hear your thoughts on it as a, as a big time, long time fan. Yeah. Uh, so depending on how much time we had left, I was like, you know how we've done this every year. And mm-hmm. I think we could go through this fairly fast. Our picks for the Game Award nominees, right? Right. We always do this. And so I, of course, <clears throat> didn't go through all 32 categories because lots of them are esports. And sorry, guys, we don't we don't know anything about that. So our opinion on who wins or whatever would matter not, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously I chose ones that we could actually play the games mm-hmm. and could have had of our opinion. Granted, I've not played every game on the list, but let's see. Okay. I think I should do Game of the Year last. I wrote it first for some dumb reason, but that should be last. Now, did you vote? <laughs> did you actually go and put your votes in? I hadn't yet because it needed me to sign in, damn it. And sometimes mm. I didn't feel like creating a, a thing. But I am planning on it. Well, I wish I'd have, I'd have grabbed my, my notes because then I could be like, hey, here's what I voted for. And then I could just. Well, we'll just say it was what you voted for. Because okay. I really I don't remember know. what I voted for. <laughs> <laughs> That's, well, maybe when I say it, it'll 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 jog your memory. Hey. Uh, but let's see. We'll start with the best game direction. OK. So and, and siblings, if you've not heard us do this before, we pretty much just fire off what it is, make our picks and move on. We're not going to get into like huge reasonings why yet mm-hmm. until next week. Uh, let's see. So best game direction. They have Deathloop. It takes two. Psychonauts two. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Or Returnal, which I knew that was your favorite. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, as f- I haven't gotten to play uh, a lot of these. I know that I, some of them are good, yeah. uh, but I think uh, Ratchet and Clank kind of got my spot with that one because it was, um, I mean, it was just a solid game. Great writing, great uh, gameplay. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's solid direction overall, in my opinion. Nice. And you know what? I'm going to say It Takes Two because I want it to clean up and just be mm-hmm. like, nah, 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 because it wouldn't have to say It Takes Two on everything. Yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> all right for the next one we have best narrative Mm -hmm. death loop it takes two psychonauts two marvel's guardians of the galaxy or life is strange true colors well i think i'll have to give this to guardians because it's the only one i know the story to (laughs) i was gonna say i'm wondering because i feel like i've been hearing good things about the uh story i don't know for this one granted i've not played all of these i almost want to go life is strange because they've always had really great narrative it like pulls at the heartstrings Mm -hmm. you know um and uh we can't pick the same thing because you know one of us has to win sure right okay yeah so (laughs) Uh, let's see. Best music and score. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have near replicant version, blah, 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 blah. I didn't write down all the digits. Sure. Sorry, guys. Uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Deathloop, Cyberpunk 2077, which still had a good, good okay. music. Okay. All okay. right. We're going okay. that way. Okay. And then The Artful Escape. Now, I think I gave this one to The Artful Escape because we talked about this and that had a I solid think- soundtrack. It did, and it was built around the whole thing. And, and, uh, no offense to the Guardians, because that was rocking too, but this was original. <laughs> With Guardians of the Galaxy, where Wham sings. Yeah. 
<laughs> what was it again that we screwed up? It was a song from Aha, but you said it was way off. And yeah. I remember the name of the song. I'm Anywho. ashamed. Ah, <laughs> uh, whatever. You know what, though? I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to agree with you on this one, the Artful Escape, because just the music was so good. Mm. I was like, Cyberpunk's was really good. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is totally music I would listen to, like in my. It's solid, life. yeah. But yeah. don't get me wrong. But it's just originality is what I got to give. it Yes, to. it was very original, very original. Uh, let's see here. Best performances. Mm. Um, we have Erica Mori as Alex Chen from Life is Strange. Giancarlo Esposito as Anton Castillo from Far Cry 6. Jason Kelly as Colt Vaughn in Deathloop. Maggie Robinson as Lady Dimitrescu. I don't think I ever learned how to say that from Resident (laughs) Evil Village, her name. But the big lady that Mm. everyone wanted to get stepped on from. Um, And Ozioma Akaga as Juliana Blake from Deathloop. I don't know. You don't know? I would, I you know, if if you're going by talent alone, not no offense to, to everybody else, but Giancarlo Esposito, I mean, yeah. why wouldn't you? Because I haven't even played the game, and something just tells me he's not going to phone that shit in. Right? So, right? I'll give it to so him. So are you going with uh, uh, Giancarlo Esposito? Yeah, why something? not? Let's see here. Oof. It this just feels like a shoe I think I'm going to go Maggie Robertson simply because, my God, did people fall in love with her Mm -hmm. and that character. My God, the cosplays, the fan fictions. It's crazy. Yeah. People loved her. Uh, Let's see. Best Indie. Okay. Best Indie. 12 Minutes. Mm -hmm. Death's Door. Mm-hmm. Inscription, which oddly enough, I just got on Humble the other day, so I need to check it out, I guess, now. Mm-hmm. Um, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, mm-hmm. or Loop Hero, which I hadn't really heard of Kinda, either. Uh, <laughs> I heard about it, and I looked into it, and I was like, this is not what I expected. This is but, how I know I'm like way into like the, those other scenes when I'm mm-hmm. like looking at a lot of these. I'm like, I never heard of that game. How? I mean, I guess I got to give it to Kenna because it looked like the most non-independent uh, game that I've seen in a long time. Like, it could have easily passed as a triple A. As a triple A? Yeah. yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It is. <laughs> but, I mean, the others could be good, too. I don't know. I know. I feel like I wish I would have played Inscription instead of letting RimWorld absorb my day mm-hmm. so I could have um, had a better one. I might change my mind, but... Because I love 12 Minutes, but it wasn't great. Mm-hmm. You know what? Let's go Inscription because I know nothing. Go for it. And it looked more, yeah, who knows, right? Uh, best VR or AR game. We have Hitman 3. I Expect You to Die 2. Okay. Lone Echo 2. Resident Evil 4, oddly. And then Sniper Elite VR. I think I I think I was leaning toward Resident Evil Four because I know that's a favorite of people, and I've actually heard it is a really good uh, VR port. Like what they did uh, to change it? it was actually impressive to take okay. a, an old concept and and turn it into something new again. People so, love Four. They do. It is uh, one of those things. I, ooh, see, I expect you to die too. Like those games are so fun. I mm-hmm. even enjoyed the first one. Uh, but I kind of feel like I'm going to go with Hitman 3. Okay. I think I'm going to go with Hitman 3. All right. Let's see here. Best action game. Back for Blood. Chivalry 2. Deathloop. Far Cry 6. Or Returnal. And this was for? Best action, action. game. Hmm. You know what? Deathloop. Something tells me it's going to win everything anyway, so I might as well give it something. That's so funny. I was literally just writing my name next to that one, too. Because Back for Blood, I don't feel like it's gotten a lot of really great press. <laughs> Far Cry 6 is the same as any Far Cry, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't play Returnal, so I don't know. Uh, so Lace and Steven, both on Deathloop. Let's see. Best Action Adventure. Guardians of the Galaxy. Metroid Dread. Psychonauts 2. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, 
or Resident Evil Village. Damn it. All right, oh, now, yeah. now action adventure. This, this gets difficult because I could almost part of me would lean into Guardians for a, a, a bevy of reasons, but I think mm-hmm. I got to give it to Ratchet and Clank because it was just Ooh, okay. solid all around. Let's see here. I I'm gonna go with Resident Evil Village. I'm okay. gonna ride the Lady Demestra. Demes, what I don't know, siblings. I don't know how to say her name. Dem- Lady D. Let's just call her Lady, Lady D. D. <laughs> Lady D. Come on, baby. Come on, step on me. I'm such a child. <laughs> All right. Best role playing. Best role playing game. Cyberpunk 2077. It made yeah. me smile. <laughs> it just, oh, it's hanging in there. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> Scarlet Nexus, mm-hmm. Shin Megami Tensei, which five, sorry, mm-hmm. I got to say five, and then Tales of Arise. Tales of Arise. Why do I know that? I Why looked it up a little bit when I was um, looking at these, and I could see me getting into it. Uh, I'll give it to, uh, w- uh, which which one did you say there was one in there that sounded Shin very Megami familiar? Megami Tensei No, five, the one before that. Monster Hunter Rise. Scarlet Nexus. That one, yeah. Because you were talking about it so heavily and yeah. it seemed to be that's, popular. That's actually the way I'm going to go, too, because I really did like that game. It was really good. And I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. Um, Cyberpunk 2077, great story, great everything. But I don't know that it should get awards this year. Um, anyway, best sim strategy game, mm-hmm. Age of Empires 4, Evil Genius 2, World Domination, Humankind, Inscription, there's that one again. Um, and Microsoft Flight Sim. I mean, it is uh, very realistic, obviously, sure. obviously, because of how they did it. You know what? <laughs> so uh, it is a simulation game. Let's, let's give it to that inscription game. Why not? Since it's yeah. popping up again. It's popping its head in there. I like, I just got it on a humble, was kind of looking at it, and then all of a sudden I saw it in here, and I was like, damn. Hmm. I mean, Look at that thing. On this. <laughs> Slept on it. Um, let's see. I'm going to go with Evil Genius 2 World Domination because it's fun to say. Sure. And those are cute games. Um, so, Des, Des, my God. Best debut indie The Artful Escape, The Forgotten City, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, Sable, or Valheim. I'm going to go ahead and give this to The Artful Escape as well because I just had a lot of fun with that game. It was. And it's so unique. Mm -hmm. It was so unique. I'm going to say Valheim because I know people love that game. And I haven't tried it yet. Uh, Most anticipated game. So it hasn't come out yet. Hopefully we're all excited. (laughs) So Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, the sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild or Starfield? Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go God of War. Going to go God of War. I'm going to go Starfield. Yeah. I am actually kind of excited for that. Uh, All right. And then, of course, to wrap it all up, Game of the Year. Our choice on Game of the Year. So the nominees are... Death Loop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, or Resident Evil Village? Uh, I'm going to have to go. I'm gonna, I know it's going to be, um, it's not going to happen because Death Loop's going to win everything. Probably. Okay. And look, I've heard a lot of great things about it. Mm-hmm. But I just I don't know. You know what was I funny know. is I was excited about it till I saw more gameplay, mm-hmm. and then I wasn't, and I was like, "Aw, huh. it kind of looks like whatever." Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ratchet and Clank is what I would like to see win because I feel like that series gets praised, but not it never seems to win anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, Maybe I'm wrong. True. Maybe I'm wrong. But well, it's a great series. From a great company, maybe. I'm probably wrong, but I'm going to say it takes two again. Good. 
for game of the year. I want him to win everything and steal the name and have to have it on every piece of whatever anyway yeah so there's our pick siblings next week let's see how right we were when we have our game awards uh showcase Mm -hmm. yeah big old game awards outside of that are you gonna are you gonna finally let us know the end of the story no it's not the end but we're close Ah! You're going to leave you on another cliffhanger. So, yeah. So, (laughs) at least now you're aware of that. But uh, we Mm -hmm. have come to another point in our story. Now, this is another big, this is the big moment. So, think about like this. is like we were leading up to this. And then the story you'll get, uh, not next week, because Game Awards. we got to talk Game Awards. But on our uh, season finale, if you will, I'll wrap up everything and... There, there's a reason I split it up this much because the next the next story is kind of like the fallout. Oh, I you know? trust, yeah. Like everything that happened because of this, the fallout mm. and what that led to. So it's worth it. Okay, but this week, this week, where are we at? Well, this is this is the big time. This is what we've been building to. Because for most of November, except for maybe the first, uh, it's been this story. We've been chronicling this journey that led to the esrb albeit in a very condensed form sure cliff's notes at best 18 years ago next week okay next week the video game landscape changed forever all because violence in america was on the rise and people were look for looking for something to blame something to pin it on oh, well, something we didn't age out of okay. yeah we we don't want to look at guns, we don't want to look at uh, uh, you know abusive parents. We want to look at this thing that kids do. Mm-hmm. You know, to hell with trying to find the root problem. We just want to blame that because we can see it, and there's violence in these video games. Mm-hmm. And as you said, that vicious, that you vicious cycle keep continues on to banging this day. that drum. <laughs> so why not? In December of 1993, Democratic senators Herbert Cole and Joseph Lieberman. If you know those names, uh, you know, you've been paying attention to the news. Uh, they kicked off the proceedings. Or even alive that long. Yeah. <laughs> you know, why would it still be in the news? Uh, they kicked <laughs> off the proceedings to discuss with members of the video game industry the impact their content is having on today's impressionable youth. If I may, I want to read you the opening statement from Senator Lieberman. And I want you to take note of one detail I mentioned two weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. And if I could do, like, an impression... He doesn't seem like a guy who's got the... the, Some... Nothing. He's not a Bush. He's not a a Trump. (laughs) Right. You know? Charisma. Anyway, he says, Every day, the news brings more images of random violence, torture, and sexual aggression right into our living rooms. Just this week, we heard the dreadful story of a young girl abducted from a slumber party in her own home then found dead. A man on a commuter train begins coldly and methodically to fire away on innocence on their way home, killing five people and injuring many others. Violent images permeate more and more aspects of our lives, and I think it's time we draw the line with violence in video games. The new generation of video games contains the most horrible depictions of graphic violence and sex, including particularly violence against women. Like the Grinch who the stole Christmas, most dip- the most, the okay, most. the most we've ever seen, ever. ever. Seen. ever. Like ever. the Grinch who stole Christmas, these violent video games threaten to rob this holiday season of its spirit of goodwill. Instead of enriching a child's mind, these games teach a child to enjoy torture. Yeah, they do. When I look <laughs> at the video game landscape today, there is an abundance of games laden with extreme violence, graphic nudity, graphic nudity in the nineties, yo, <laughs> and explicit language. At the time of this hearing, the games being targeted were Night Trap, Mortal Kombat, and Lethal Enforcers, a light gun shooter that utilized digitized sprite characters, much like Mortal Kombat. Did any of those have nudity? Hmm. I don't think any of those games you just rattled off has uh, nudity. No, no, they don't. Okay. So. <laughs> but it was the most. <laughs> oh, the, the, the absolute <laughs> most you've ever seen. Anyway. Like, I, there's not. Mortal Kombat um, today 
has, I mean, it's it's nothing like it was back then. Well, sure. No, not I mean, I just, ones. you the amount of blood and gore that were in those games back then, oh my God. If we only knew. If we only knew. Now, if you take a look at the games in question that, that, that he lists, Night Trap, Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat, and Lethal Enforces, the only common thread that I could find outside of, you know, violence... But why Why those games? It had to be realism. You know, we're using realistic digitized sprites. We're using real footage. The, the characters oh, yeah, of Lethal Enforcers. Yeah. It, it's digitized sprites of people. So we see people. So therefore, you could say the violence is real. You know. Sure. Hypothetically. Okay. And even Lieberman enforces this idea by saying, quote, Night Trap uses actual actors and attains an unprecedented level of realism. It contains graphic depictions of violence against women with strong overtones of sexual violence. I find this game deeply offensive and believe that it simply should be taken off the market now. Said from the person who never played the game. I'm Said sure. from a person who never played it because, oh my God, it is nothing like if that. If you find that terrifying... I mean, <laughs> it is not it got that. stuck in like bed traps or wall traps. Yeah, it's so Whatever. ridiculous. Anyway, following that statement, now he commented that CD technology makes sexually explicit video games readily available, which is something that boggles my mind <laughs> because where? Right, I would you have know? played those. I didn't have. Sexually now, explicit. Yeah. I mean, look. <laughs> and I, I played PC people. <laughs> when all this was happening, I was probably uh, 14 at the time. Mm-hmm. And never once do I remember finding a treasure trove of sexually explicit content waiting for me on a CD-ROM. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, tra- yeah. I remember trying to find it on the internet at the time. And that was hard enough. <laughs> right? It was just like travel blogs and crap. Right? Like, I don't want to see that. <laughs> And, and cable television was also going to be this harbinger of explicit fornication, you know? Mm-hmm. And look, he wasn't wrong there, but that was kind of a blanket statement. I mean, you know, HBO is not Nickelodeon, so you can't blame cable sure. for something that another cable channel is doing. So don't, don't, don't blame all of cable for that. But I get what you're but saying. We got to blame all of video games. We got we to gotta blame everything. Mario is yeah. violent. I'm telling you. Now, he goes on to recognize that the industry was intent on creating a rating system for video games, uh, something that one publisher had already taken the initiative on. Because on May 24th, 1993, Sega had introduced the Video Game Ratings Council, which compromised a numerous, or which comprised, I don't, it didn't compromise shit, it comprised, <laughs> was comprised of numerous experts in psychology, sociology, and education that would classify their games under three age-based categories. You had GA, which is general audiences, mm-hmm. MA13, which was mature audiences, which I don't really see how that... I, I'm, I'm confused by that one, but whatever. Yeah, and they 13. were too. And then MA17, which is for adults. Now, Sega had been engaged with numerous members of the industry and had their full support in working to implement an industry-wide rating system. I felt like I almost went Elmer Fudd there. You, it, something was happening. <laughs> industry-wide rating <Industry> system. Industry-wide. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying to implement this industry-wide rating system long before these hearings. But there was only one big holdout. Can you guess who was holding out on this? Like government or games? Video game industry. Oh. Some, there, there, was, Yay. <laughs> there was one big holdout in this whole industry... And they could have easily turned the tide before this hearing. They could have made this shit go away like that. But you see, it was Sega doing this. And who would just who would hold out? Oh, out was of it Nintendo? Absolutely, it was Nintendo. But they only put family friendly games on their console anyway, so they don't need a rating system at this point. Remember? Right. <laughs> and uh, it's no secret Sega and Nintendo were bitter rivals at this point sure. in time. The rivalry seemed to be personified during this hearing between Bill White, who was uh, with Sega, and Howard Lincoln of Nintendo. The two represented their respective companies, albeit on 
very different opposing view fronts. Howard Lincoln spoke in the hearing about Nintendo doing their due diligence to self-regulate and to ensure extreme violence and sex were never present in their titles due to their publishing guidelines that developers must follow. You Mm -hmm. have to follow these guidelines. We're going to be pure. Bill White, on the other hand, was always on the defensive. And he had to be, because he was actively being blamed for allowing games like Mortal Kombat and Night Trap to be put in the hands of children, despite Sega's proactive efforts at a rating system. And even... Uh, (laughs) My God, people just can't accept when they were wrong. Mm -hmm. And even the rating system wasn't good enough for Senator Lieberman. He called the move, quote, the least the video game industry could do. He went on to question who would be in charge of determining ratings, how many ratings, and will every publisher participate, who will inform the parents of the ratings, and so on. He said he didn't want... (laughs) (laughs) Let's start there, and then, you know. He said he didn't want these ratings to be selling points for children, even though... That's exactly what happened. Mm. Okay, the moment you tell kids they aren't allowed, mm-hmm. they want it more. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean... Why they, can't I have it? What's all, so good in there? Why am I not allowed to see why it's so good? I can handle it. I'm mature enough. Mom, mom, mom. I knew nothing about Night Trap. And then when this court case started, That's I wanted to happened. see it more than anything. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, I wanted to see I've said that forever. Everyone who takes their stand on Twitter against a developing team most of the time, never heard of it till you Mm. put it out there. Guess what? You just gave them free PR. Yep. (laughs) Every time I see it, I just roll my eyes. Now, Senator Lieberman further, further advocated for the enforcement of these ratings, citing that they should be boldly displayed, completely transparent, and any distributor's would be penalized for selling games to children under the age limit. But again, it wasn't good enough. Okay, Most of the senators who spoke at the hearing made broad generalizations about what they had seen. Because they don't understand it. Mm, Calling the games sick and disgusting. One senator uh, specifically described Night Trap as, quote, an effort to trap and kill women. Easily mm-hmm. proving how misinformed he really was. Yep. Argu- arguments against these games. They also wanted us to believe it was vampires, but anyway. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> so, they did lie a little. Arguments against these games always boil down to one thing. Think of the children. Won't somebody no, please no. think of the children? Adults aren't allowed to have anything because of the children. Mm-hmm. Funny enough, uh, Parker Page, who was the head of the Children's Television Resource and Education Center, said, quote, It's important to underscore that parents must still shoulder the major responsibility for guiding their children's entertainment activities. A novel idea. Yeah. And this was after reinforcing all the prior talking points. Dr. Robert Chase, the vice president of the National Education Association, made similar statements saying that the first line of defense is family. But never once is the responsibility of the parents for their children ever discussed in full, only in passing. Never. It's amazing, right? I didn't think they wanted to co-parent. No. Now, another point the hearings brought up was clear gender bias that lied within video games. Eugene Provenzo, a professor at University of Miami, who wrote the book Video Kids, Making Sense of Nintendo, brought up the common theme within most games. A woman, usually a princess, is kidnapped, and the man must go rescue her. This I agree with. Yeah. Actually. It's not an uncommon trope, and not one relegated to video games either. Right. (coughs) Another, uh, or a mother, a woman, who is, oh, a mother. I don't know (laughs) why these words, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, yes, it says mother. A A breeding human. (laughs) Her name, Marilyn Draws, she spoke of her research into video games and saw no strong female role models in video games and commented how the industry felt geared specifically for boys. And I can agree with that. Uh, Even when she brought up exceptions like Samus Aran and Sonya Blade, she mentions that they aren't strong without iron suits or kisses of death. 
Uh, Provenzo backs this claim up with the statement, video games have a marked tradition of extreme violence, which is also combined with gender discrimination. And if there was anything said in this hearing that I could agree with, it's this. Right. I was going to say that, yes, 100%. Obviously, many are working to correct this mistake, but it feels intrinsic to the industry and will take time to remove all these years later the fact that we're still fighting it. It's ridiculous. We're a lot better, but yeah, it's still 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 a struggle in some cases, yeah. Uh, racism was another point of contention, and maybe you can see if you have any memories of that. Now, while I personally mm-hmm. do not remember seeing any growing up, that doesn't mean that they weren't there. We probably weren't looking for it. Right. So, yeah. I mean, we have mentioned the horrendous nature of Custer's Revenge on numerous occasions mm-hmm. where it depicted indigenous people in the worst possible way. Fuck that game, sure. if I may say it again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous but i don't ever remember seeing games like that now that's not to say as you said we weren't identifying them as such right they could have been out there maybe just went over our head Mm -hmm. uh there was an educational game which i never heard of maybe uh it passed through your school or not Uh, an educational game called freedom was developed and released by the minnesota educational computing consortium who were best known for other educational titles like Oregon Trail and Number Munchers. The game was meant to teach children about the plights of slavery, but led to a number of parents complaining about the game, citing that the game had turned black history into a game. You know, not really taking it seriously as a lesson to be learned, but now you've turned it into an adventure title. I guess I would have to see the content and how they were displaying it because, again, I like context before I make opinions on things. Right. (laughs) So I don't know. I don't know. So for me, these two titles at this point in time were the only ones I could find that could be branded for racial insensitivity. Okay. In the 90s. Not to say that there weren't others. I d- sure. From, from what I saw, I saw no games between, say, Custer's Revenge and this hearing that said... That at least made headlines. Racist, anyway. racist, racist. Oh, yeah. my God, this is racist. Anything. Now, <clears throat> funny enough, if you go uh, after 9-11, whew, the floodgates are open for racism. You know? Well, <laughs> so oh, True. Yeah. Just, you just had to wait till we were allowed again. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what racist images are they referring to specifically? Well, when pressed about games featuring racist content, Professor Provenzo noted interviews taken with children about playing video games. The children stated that ninjas were bad, and they used Asian racial epithet to describe who the ninjas were. So, take your pick of whatever Asian... And this was in the 90s, eh? Yeah. Now, if I heard a kid using a term like that, okay, I would immediately that ninjas look. Ninjas were bad. No, no, no. If they were calling the ninjas uh, the c word, uh, uh, if you kind of okay. follow me on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, you know, I'd kind of look at their parents. You know, not the video game, because if the video game is not necessarily teaching them the uh, you know uh, racial slur to a to an Asian person then they're picking it up somewhere and it's not the video game. So they had to have been learning that from someone else in the house. That This one's tough. Cause if you're using it as an educational tool, no, 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 yeah, no, no, I no. want to see. Oh, if, I thought we were talking about the game. We're talking about, do I, do I need to repeat this? Because I think you, you stayed behind a few. Maybe I did. Okay. I thought I was listening. Well, we were talking about, we were talking about the parents being upset at the game. We were talking about the the other game. Okay. Uh, the one that was supposed to be teaching them about racism? About slavery. Oh, okay. Or now, slavery. Yes. What we're talking about here is the uh, professor of educational studies had done interviews with children about playing video games. And oh. apparently the children stated that ninjas were bad and they would use racial slurs to... Uh, identify the ninjas. And these kids had not played the game. No, these were kids who had been playing these ninja games and they called the ninjas 
words I can't say and you're going to make right. me say them. <laughs> I guess I was trying to. OK, yes, I got you now. So okay. they were like learning this elsewhere. Right. That's what I'm okay. that's the point I'm trying to make. So if, if there's a kid calling a ninja a, mm, yeah. you know, that's Where'd they get I'd that be looking from? at the parents because the game doesn't have it. I don't ever remember playing Ninja Gaiden and being like, hey, See, that's they, what I was wondering. I was like, was it in the game? No. OK. No. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's yeah. that's my point here. OK, Yeah. who's raising them? So, like, uh, the only ninja games, like I said, I ever remember playing, I played the ninja, and I don't ever remember them being like, hey, get that, I'm not going to say words. No. You got it. You got it. I actually, thankfully, don't know anybody who has used that, like, casually. <laughs> like, even as a kid, I don't remember, so. I, yeah, I've i heard it for because, like you it. know, you get around the racist type. Anyway, <laughs> sure. uh, he also mentioned homophobia in the same statement, but. Honestly, I could not tell you what he was referring to in that moment. Like, I, 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 I've done, I did research as I was writing a lot of this stuff. I have no idea what he was talking about. Oh, another one who probably just didn't look into it. I think he was just yanking for something. He's like, well, you know what? This is a great time. We could yank racism into this. Let's just, let's uh-huh. just toss it yeah. in too. Uh, with so many talking points brought up, th- only three games were the focal point of this hearing, with Night Trap being the one taking the most heat. <laughs> I know. <laughs> really didn't need to. I thought it was hilarious over Mortal Kombat, even. Sega also took the brunt of most of the criticism since they allowed these games to be available on their console without censorship. Sega's attempt to appeal to a growing teen and adult audience was backfiring despite their best efforts. But Bill White stood his ground. When pressed if he thought Night Trap was suitable for an adult audience, he pointed to films like Gone with the Wind and Roots, citing if you only saw the gory parts of those films, you may come to the same conclusion. Right? As they were with Night Trap. And, you know, that Gone with the Wind is just Did as problematic. Did they never show them singing and dancing around having just a wonderful time? Apparently not. Apparently not. They're having a lot of fun. But weren't they drinking? And what are they trying to imply to the children there? Oh, I don't remember if they were drinking. And maybe possibly <laughs> having that I just dope. remember them singing into their brushes, just like teenage girls would do. Anyway. Even they weren't teenagers. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm derailing. We're already at two hours. Uh, Howard Lincoln fervently continued to throw Bill White and Sega under the bus. While he was praising Nintendo's efforts to keep games safe for children. You know, Sega was bad. Nintendo good. I know, I know, right? Bill White (laughs) did actually get a good shot in when he brought up the uh, Super Scope for the Super Nintendo, which was Mm. then criticized by those same people, saying, well, that looks like an assault rifle to me, even though it really kind of doesn't. But, you know, hey, good for them. They had gun peripherals yeah uh, duck hunt hello i mean the zapper the old nes zapper looked more like a gun than the super scope but again yeah. i'm giving them credit but I it's give, still a fair point yeah i give them credit uh the blame and criticism continued through until such time that it was seen that a rating system was the only sure way to begin regulation because this is the only thing that's gonna happen and howard lincoln was not a fan he was just like Ugh. Even though, you know, Nintendo's all for regulation, what his fear was is that a rating system would just open the floodgates. Um, And you know, he wasn't wrong. Of more games. (laughs) Of more games where developers be like, you know, we got a rating system now. We can go totally MA. Following the hearings. Following the hearings, the video game industry was given an ultimatum. Establish a rating system for video games on your own, or the government will do it for you. Oof. The events that took place following the hearing would challenge the structure of the industry going forward, forging a path that led to the industry of today. To be continued in two weeks. Uh, This is interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. This is interesting. Some stuff I didn't uh, know and was too young to really, like, take in and, (laughs) you know. There is so much. Like, I I got a transcript to really kind of break down a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff being said is just like, my God. 
Well, that's what I mean. We still have that problem today. We when do. I listen to our representatives talk about technology. I'm like, oh my god, I just wish you knew about it a little bit so that you didn't sound like such a moron in these hearings. Mm. Like, even I went, what? Yeah. What do you want to happen? <laughs> that's not how it works. <clears throat> Anywho, well, that's our show for this mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. If you're still here, thank you. Thank you. It was a long Absolutely. one. We appreciate you, siblings. Uh, but don't forget, you can hit us up sometime on Twitter at Super Mega Crash, or you can send us an email to supermegacrash at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram to view the weekly icon art that Stephen puts his time and love into. Look into it better than I do, even, <laughs> so you can see the details, okay? Uh, support the show by liking and leaving reviews on your preferred platform, and even going to patreon.com forward slash pencil and paper productions. You can tell your friends to find us on the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network, or search Super Mega Crash Brothers Turbo wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and even going to youtube.com forward slash pencil and paper productions thank you for listening i am Lacey finley and i'm stephen white and you can join us again next time super mega crash siblings but until then game on This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.